Hello all, welcome to the video lecture series of CS404 Embedded Systems. So in this video, I am going to take a topic in third module. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, please go back and see those videos for a better understanding of this module. So in this video, we are talking about mixing assembly and hello image. And we can actually do it in a three type. We can mix assembly with high level language or we can mix high level language with assembly language or inline assembly. So let's take uh, why should we do that. So there are certain situations which demand us of mixing high level with assembly language or assembly with high level language. So if you do not understand what these are, there are three type of language that is high level language assembly language and machine language. These are the three types of language in coding. Machine language is closest to the machine and high level language is the more English like language and assembly language is little bit uh, use, it uses symbols and it is more close to machine language than the high level language. So as I said there are three methods that is that is missing assembly language with high level language or mixing high level language with assembly language or inline assembly so let's take uh, talk about the first method that is missing accent assembly language with high level language so we are we are doing here that uh, we write the entire code in a high level language for example c and we add a function that is written in assembly language that is so we are writing a entire code in C language and we are adding an assembly routine on G. So this will allow for a, some specific advantages to our code. So what are the situations for which we have to do this? So what are the scenarios? So some of the scenarios are, for example, let's take that the cross compiler we are using may not have the all, may not have all the building support. So if we don't have the uh, building support like in rep service routine ISR, we can use this method to incorporate that building support. Another scenario or situation in which we have to use the assembly language, uh, incorporate assembly language in a hello language. That is, as you know that uh, assembly language is close to the machine language. Machine language is the language that machine understands. So, uh, then the high, uh, so the assembly language is close to the machine language than the high level language. So, it has an advantage of speed and its code is more optimized than the high level language. So, if you are to want to use these advantages of the speed and optimization of code, we can uh, incorporate uh, assembly language in our high level languages. And, and we can uh, take an, another example or scenario that is when we are accessing when we are accessing certain low level hardware the time specification is very crucial so in accessing certain low level hardware the time specification is very crucial so in that case it's better to use assembly language than high level language so in doing this there are some challenges these challenges are same as you are using a function. So first thing is while we are doing a function is we pass the parameters. When the parameters reach the function, the function do its purpose and it returns a value. And so uh, the challenges are we have to pass the parameters and we have to pass the return value to the calling function, uh, calling method. And we can we also have to invoke the invoke the function. So that is calling the function in usual way, but here it is little more complicated as we are passing the function from a high level language to assembly routine. So the challenges are passing parameters to the assembly routine and returning the value from assembly routine to the C function, which is the calling function. And as you know that the invoking the assembly routine is different in different post compilers. It's actually dependent on post compiler. So if, if for different cost compilers, there would be a different uh, method for invoking. So uh, for the efficient code, we have to read the cost compiler description for writing the efficient code. So let's take an example. So this, uh, this is a Kyle C51 cost compiler. It's cost compiler used for 
coding 8051 microcontroller so in this and this is an example to give an idea on how C51 closed compiler perform the mixing of assembly code uh, with C so it gives an idea uh, how this is working so first thing we do is that we actually write a simple C function that passes the parameters and returns away uh, and and returns the value that the way you want your assembly routine to do so we are not actually writing the assembly code but we are assuming that we have we have the value we write the code like that and we use the src directive like hash pra gmsrc at the top of the file we write this at the top of the file so that the c compiler generate and dot src instead of dot obg so the compiler uh, compiles the files since the src directive is specified that dot src file is generated so the dot src file contains the assembly code generated for the c code you have written so it creates the assembly code for the c program we have written and into uh, then next step is to rename the dot src file to dot a51 file. Now we edit this dot a51 file and insert the assembly code uh, that we are adding into this code and we run the body. So this is not an important topic but you should learn an example of this uh, method uh, because in previous air question papers uh, these methods are asked with an example. So even though you don't learn this, you have to learn a simple example from the uh, internet or something. So let's go to the next method that is mixing the high level language with assembly language. So here the entire code is written in assembly language and we are including uh, a high level language to this. So why should we do that? Uh, so the, the uh, some scenarios of where we use this is the first scenario. Let's consider that we have already available in and the source code is available in assembly language. If the source code is already available in assembly language, a routine written in high level language like C can be included into the existing code to extend our code. This is the one situation. Another is that if we have planned so as i told earlier for using assembly code there are certain advantages like optimization of the code efficiency and memory utilization so for this purpose if we are planned the entire source code in assembly code consider if we plan the entire source code in assembly code but for some portion of the code we may use the high language because for example it's very difficult as we all know it's as the assembly language is uh, uh, close to the machine language, uh, it is more difficult to code, code than in high level language. So for coding a 60 bit multiplication and the divider in 8051 assembly language is very difficult than we have, can code in a high level language. So in such cases, we may have to use the high level language in the assembly language for easiness of coding. And the another situation is that the inbuilt libraries, as we all already know that we have many inbuilt libraries in C language like math.h, string, string.h, and graphic libraries, etc. For, uh, for utilizing advantage, advantages of these inbuilt libraries, we include the high level language code in the assembly code. So these are the some of the scenarios in which we can uh, use this method. So the challenges, the challenges are same as the previous method that is uh, passing the parameters to the C function. Earlier it was passing the parameters to a assembly routine from a C function. Here it is from uh, assembly language to C function and returning the value from C function. Uh, earlier it was from assembly to C function. Here it is from C function to assembly. And as of earlier, the method of invoking the function. So it's also dependent on cross compiler. Depending on, on the cross, cross compiler, it may change. So let's solve these challenges. So uh, in usually the parameters are passed 
to the function and values are returned from the function are actually using CPU registers stack memory and fixed memory these are the memories that are used for passing the uh, parameters and returning the value so in passing the let's take the example of Kyle C51 as before uh, in Kyle C51 it allows the passing of actually three arguments it maximum arguments that can be passed in C51 is three arguments uh, it use uh, passed through general purpose registers R2 to R7 and if we are using uh, if you are passing a care variable they pass to the function using registers R7, R6, R5 respectively if inch variable if you are passing an int variable they are passed using pairs R7, R6 R5, R4, R3, R2. If numbers of the argument, let's consider the case if the numbers of the argument we are passing is greater than 3. If the numbers of argument is greater than 3, the first 3 argument is passed through the registers. So the first 3 argument is passed through the registers and the rest is passed through the fixed memory location. If the number of argument is greater than 3, first 3 is passed through the registers as we said before and the rest of the uh, arguments are passed through fixed memories so this is how the arguments are passed through the function now how we have to return the value from function to the calling method so here the return value are actually passed through the general purpose registers and if it's a care value the re uh, register r7 is used if it's an int value the register pair r7 and r6 are used so the challenges are passing the argument returning the value and invoking so in uh, the c subroutine can be invoked from assembly program using the subroutine called assembly instruction so using subroutine call assembly instruction we can actually uh, call the uh, invoke the c subroutine in c51 <coughs> cross compiler let's take a next number else l call space underscore c function so the c function uh, stands for the actual c function that we are going to include in this code and the, the prefix the prefix is this underscore sorry this underscore is the prefix the prefix inform the cross compiler that the parameter parameter to the function are passed through the registers if the function invoked if the function is invoked without prefix that is without this underscore uh, without the underscore it and uh, the cross compiler understood that the parameter is passed through the fixed memory so while invoking the uh, function if it is if it has prefix uh, the cross compiler understood that the parameter is passed through the registers if there is not pref uh, underscore or prefix it understand that it is passed through the fixed memory so uh, so uh, till now we have learned about the first two method now let's go for the last method that is inline assembly language it is more similar like uh, including javascript in html and uh, we use javascript to include javascript code wherever in the html like that we in here we use uh, some keywords like hash par paragamma asm and hash paragamma and asm uh, to include the assembly code wherever we want in a c language so inline assembly is another technique for inserting the target or control specific assembly instruction at any location of the source code written in a high level language so and we have to see that the, it can be included at any location of the source code so what is the benefit of using this that it avoids the delay in calling the assembly routine from c code in both earlier two methods we have to call other uh, language for, if for uh, including assembly in high level language we have to call assembly routine from high level language if mixing 
high level in assembly language we have to call the high level uh, function from the assembly routine so we in this method we can avoid that delay in calling the subroutine and in this method we use special keywords as i told earlier are used to indicate the starting and end of the assembly instruction so in uh, again we are taking the example of c51 uh, cross compiler in this the keyword use the hash pra gma asm and hash paragama and asm to indicate a block of code written in assembly so uh, this hash pragma asm and hash pargam pragma and asm include the assembly code that we are included in the high level language we can include this code wherever we want That's just like we are including javascript in html languages so these two are the previous year question questions that appears on the question paper so the first one is describe the mixing of high level language with the assembly code that is the second method we discussed with an example and the second question was in line assembly the last one with an example so you have to look at that whenever we learn these three method we have to learn it with an example so i suggest that before exam exam when you go for the exam you will uh, find some simple code that you can learn from internet and before you go to exam for right answering these questions you have to know uh, an example for each and every method of mixing high level and assembly languages so in this uh, video we have studied that the topic mixing assembly and high level language and there is three of doing it that is mixing assembly with high level language and mixing high level language with assembly language and inline assembly so the important topics we, uh, things we have to learn in this are in each and every methods are the scenarios in which we have to use these languages uh, use this method or scenarios or the challenges faced and how to solve that challenges challenges and in every each and every method we have to learn an example so i suggest before you go to example learn a simple example that you can learn easily from the internet before going to example so thank you all for listening to me hope you understand the topic and stay tuned for more videos about the uh, embedded system lecture series thank you